inherent sa atin yan before we even uh, consider yung ibang uh, supplements or gamot or mask kailangan maganda yung immune system natin and yet you don't see a lot of write-ups or news about uh, how to boost your immune system when in fact that's the our, our strongest asset right now so when we talk about the immune system and boosting it, there are four factors that you need to consider always. The first is nutrition, what you eat. The second is exercise, and then detox, and rest. Dapat meron lahat yung apat na yan. So when we talk about nutrition, basically, it's about the food that you eat. Important ito kasi, uh, we found out that uh, there are certain uh, diets, like Kung ang diet mo pangit, yung immune system mo bababa. That's a given. Yung mga sakitin, sila yung uh, pangit ang nutrition. Hindi dahil mataba kayo ay sagana kayo sa nutrition. Okay? But hindi rin ganun. Pwede kumakain kayo ng kumakain, and yet, you're not getting the right nutrients. Okay? So, importante rin na mahabol natin kung ano yung tamang nutrients natin. And then, kailangan nyo rin ng nutrients to repair. So, kung meron kayong mga pinalang nagka-COVID na naka-recover, after nilang maka-recover, meron pang problems sa lungs or sa heart. So, nagkakaroon ng mga tissue damage. Kung pangit ang nutrition mo, yung recovery, mababa. Okay? And nakalagay dyan, excess weight predisposes to highest risk of death from COVID-19. So, kung... Uh, Napapa, nakikita niyo naman siguro yung mga doctors, nurses, yung mga patients na napapatay sa COVID. Napansin niyo ba lahat sila overweight? Mm -hmm. Or most of them overweight? <laughs> yun yun. <laughs> tabi, tabi po. <laughs> Real talk lang tayo. Ang sinasabi natin, kung meron na kayong mga problems, okay, tapos dadagdagan pa natin ng COVID, yung chances na magka-problema kayo lahat, syempre mas mataas. Diba? So, and mukhang COVID is here to stay like the flu, like the colds. Magkakaroon na lang waves, makakasanayin lang natin, mag-iingat lang tayo, may vaccines or may gamot. So, habang may time tayo, ayusin na natin yung nutrition natin. Okay? So, ano ba yan? Ano ang nag-lead to uh, excess weight? Your, uh, yung Western diet, ito yung mostly fast food, burgers, fries na ganyan, pizza. You want more of the fruits and vegetables. Okay? Uh, more fish, less meat. Okay lang naman ang meat, basta hindi siya yung majority. Ang problema natin ngayon, when you eat, the soil is now less fertile. Kasi ang tagal-tagal na niya, hindi naman nalilipleanish. Food is less nutritious, kasi nga, less fertile na yung soil. Demand for nutrient is higher. Why? Kasi you work longer hours now, and you rest shorter hours. Uh, unlike yung mga kamag-anak natin sa probinsya, lumulog lola, pag dumilim, pahinga na yan. Okay? Pa, hindi na sila magtatrabaho niya, tapos kinakabukasan na ulit. Unlike sa atin, alas 9, pauwi pa lang tayo niyan, alas 10, nungutupad na natin. Kasi nga rin, magmumobile legends pa kayo, mag-Facebook pa kayo, diba? And then the intake of food, food is poor. Bakit? Wala na tayong time mag-prepare ng maayos na pagkain. Usually, mabilisan. Instant lahat. Instant noodles, microwave, or order from the uh, whatever. So, yung actual time na kailangan natin to prepare the food para ma-maximize natin yung nutrients, ang baba. So, hindi talaga pwedeng kukunin nyo ang nutrition nyo sa whole foods lang. Kailangan talaga magkakaroon tayo ng some degree of supplementation. Okay. Ang detox naman, basically, well, like any machine, kailangan natin uh, linisin ang sistema natin. Okay? Uh, waste products are produced continuously. Kahit nagpapahila lang kayo, the fact that you're breathing, that's already producing waste product, which is oxygen. Pag nag-burn kayo ng fats, nag-repair kayo, may mga natural waste products din yan. Pag lumabas kayo, may nalangap kayong usok, that's a toxin. Pag may kinaya kayong processed food, may chemicals yan, or uh, uh, minum kayo ng mga synthetic drugs, or mga food na hindi organic, yung mga may pesticides, you get all of those things. Now, before you consider any 
supplement or machine or service to detoxify. You have to maximize first. Ano yung mga built-in detox systems natin? So, ito yun. Okay, number one, bowel movement. How often should you go in a day? Yun ang beses tayo dapat nagpupo in a day. Twice or twice. Twice or twice. Once a day, twice a day, twice, a day. three times a day, once every two days. <laughs> Ideally, you should poop as frequently as you eat. So, kung tatlong beses kayo kumakain, dapat tatlong beses kayo dumutumi sa maghapon. Okay, bakit? Pag kumain kayo, anong oras kayo nagbe-breakfast? Mga 8 o'clock. Usually, uh, we go first thing in the morning, di ba? Pagkagising, before anything else, before kamaligo, yun muna. So, let's say, lumising ka ng 6, you know, I mean, everything, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, nag-breakfast ka. Two hours after, empty na yung stomach, nasa intestines sa lahat yun. And then another two hours, so mga by 12 noon, Nagkaroon na ng digestion, may waste products na, may fecal material na doon. May pupo na sa bitukan mo, na alas doon si ng tanghali. Okay? And then you have your lunch. So, medyo masakit sa... Uh, Magla-lunch kayo, so dagdag na naman yun. Mula... Okay lang pa walang may? So, pag, pag nag-poop kayo, uh, so naiipon na siya. So, lunch time meron na. Tapos magla-lunch kayo, tapos magdi-dinner kayo. Padami siya ng padami. If you only go once a day, which is first thing in the morning, the whole afternoon, dala-dala nyo yung poops. Matutulog kayo, may poops the whole night. Pero if you move regularly, walang masyado may iipon na gano'n. Actually, meron tayong tinatawag na gastrocolic reflex. I don't know if you've heard that na. Siguro may hinanalang na po. Ayan. Um, sino sa inyo dito yung pagkatapos kumain, after mga 20-30 minutes, parang nabububo? Very good. Normal yun. <laughs> yung iba pala may awag lang na cellphone, nakala ko na yes. <laughs> Kasi yun yung signal ng brain. Pag kasi nagkaroon ng laman yung chan, magsisignal siya sa brain. Sasabihin, oy, may laman ako dito. Si brain magsisignal kay large intestine. Sasabihin niya, oy, may room, may paparating. So half an hour after eating, may mararamdaman kayong urge. Yun yung signal na dapat hindi natin ini-ignore. Pero hindi natin pinapansin kasi una, we're busy. At dalawa siguro, it's uh, socially inconvenient na sa meeting ka or nasa mall, ayaw mo ng gano'n. Yung iba akala nila, hindi maganda kasi kakakain mo lang, sayang. Hindi yun yun. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> yung kakakain nyo lang, dati pa yun. So, kung magiging habit nyo ulit to do that, then automatically you can move three times a day regularly or every time you eat. Okay lang yun. Ngayon, kung matagal na kayong walang ganung habit, you can develop the habit again. How do you do that? Uh, maybe an hour after meals, punta ang banyo, upo ka lang. Just to develop the habit hanggang magkaroon ka ng urge. Until later on, magiging normal na siya. Okay? Para maging maganda yung bowel movement nyo, uh, dapat marami kayong water, maraming fibers, tsaka may, uh, may physical movement palagi. Okay. The second is yung pagbibig. Ano ang normal color ng urine? Yellowish. Colorless. Okay. Pag ang urine nyo ay yellowish, kahit very light, ibig sabihin kulang pa yung hydration. So, inom ulit kayo. Ang normal amount of fluid that you need to take is on the average, one glass every hour during the day. Okay. So, Hindi kasi natin, konti lang kasi yung pwede natin inumin at a time. At the same time, hindi natin siya mag-hold. Iwiwiwi mo lang yung extra. So, kahit uminom ka ng isang galon sa umaga, 
Tapos na building, wala na. Pagkainom mo nun, after some time, iwiwiwi mo rin, and then dehydrated ka na nabuti. So kung malamig yung panahon, pwede mong bawasan yung intake, pero yung amount yung babawasan, hindi yung frequency. So every hour pa rin, dapat may fluid intake tayo. Kung uh, very busy ka naman, mainit or uh, may physical activity, tataas yung requirement. Same frequency, pero dadagdagan mo yung volume. Ang indicator nyo lagi is your urine. Pag wiwi nyo tapos may kulay, ibig sabihin kulang pa. Okay, so wiwi na lang ulit. Uh, don't hold your urine. Pag naramdaman nyo yung urge, just go. Okay? Tapos exhalation, dito naman ang gusto natin mawala yung carbon dioxide. Okay? Marami sa atin shallow breathers. Pag shallow breather ka, ibig sabihin yung upper part lang ng lungs, yung na na empty mo, yun din lang yung makukuna ng oxygen, malalagyan ng oxygen. That's why you always need to practice deep breathing. When you do deep breathing, ah, gaya, gaya, gaya. <laughs> okay. Yung, yung, yung deeper part ng lungs, na empty nyo yung carbon dioxide. So, you give, you make room for more oxygen. More oxygen means happy brain. Uh, stronger muscles, better emotions, better cardiovascular, okay? Uh, ang technique sa deep breathing is you breathe through the nose and then you make a mental count. Let's say, one, two, three, four. And then you hold it. Kung kano katagal yung inhale, you hold it for that long also. That gives your body time to assimilate the oxygen. And then you exhale through the mouth para kontrolado. Tapos kung ano yung count nyo going in, doble yung going out. Okay? So for example, you inhale, 1, 2, 3, 4, hold, 1, 2, 3, 4, exhale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ang goal is to extend the inhalation for as long as we can. Ibig sabihin na ma-maximize nyo na yung lung capacity. Okay? Whenever you have time, practice nyo yan. Huwag lang pag nasa gitna kayo ng kalye o mga gano'n. At please lang, kung ginagawa nyo ito dati at palang nyo gawin pag wala ng lockdown, hindi nakaganda ng katawan nyo yung tumatakbo kayo sa kalye during rush hour. At alam nyo yun, yung mga nagja-jogging ng no, mga 4 o'clock, 5, 6 o'clock. Kasi yun yung kasag kasagsagan ng pollution. Tapos nilalanghap nyo lang lalo lang yun. Hindi lang regular na langhap nang naglalakad ka. Ito kasi tumatakbo ka pa so mas marami ka pang nakukuha. Pwede kang pumayag pero masaki yung lungs mo afterwards. And so many other problems. Okay, so huwag ganun. So yan yun. Ito namang sweating, pagpapapawis, hindi dahil mainit. Kailangan may movement. So discuss natin mamaya yan sa part ng exercise. So, ayan ang detox. So, ayan naman ang exercise. So, sa exercise, kailangan dalawa yung component, pero ang cardio, ito yung jogging, running, bike, and resistance training, weights. Okay? If you do, sinong nag-yoga? Wala. Okay. Yoga kasi is good for cardio and resistance. You can, kung wala kayong leg ngayon, wala namang gym na mga bukas na for everyone, you can work, uh, work out at home. Kahit yung mga simpleng push-ups, pwede nyo gawin yun. Or kung wala namang masyadong problema ang legs, you can use your own body weight. Like yung mga simple na squat. Ano lang? Wait, ito mo na. <laughs> okay. So, squat, push-up. Kung medyo... Uh, mabigat kayo, hindi nyo pa kaya yung katawan nyo, you can do it progressively. So, pwede sa wall muna, tapos table na mas mataba, and then chair, hanggang magagawa nyo yung progress. Or kung gusto nyo yung flat, uh, nakatukod yung tuhod. So, hindi diretso buong katawan, para ka nakatukod lang na nagpupo siya. And then you go to YouTube, marami kayong mga exercise na pwede nyo gawin. Now, natinong kami sa sports experts, ano yung best uh, exercise tool. Kung, kung wala kayong problema sa pera, the best is a swimming pool. Okay? So, yan kasi, very safe sa joints, kahit maglakad ka lang dyan, with resistance. 
maganda na yung exercise mo. Ngayon, kung wala kayong access sa swimming pool or maliit lang yung area yung hindi pwede mo paggawa ng swimming pool, the next best thing is a good pair of dumbbells. Kasi with dumbbells, ang dami mo nang pwede mong gawin. Again, you can modify this. Yung mga uh, water bottles, yung 1 liter, ang 1 liter ng tubig is equivalent to 1 kilo. So, pwede nyo gawing weights yun na magaan. Okay? Kung meron pa yung 1.5 na coke, sana wala, di ba? Pero kung meron, you can use that for progression mas matigal. Pero mas cheaper than that and mas practical is a yoga mat. Latag ka lang doon and do your body exercises. Or kahit wala kang latag, kung malinis yung floor mo, hindi naman masakit sa tubod, then you can also do that. Next is our sleep. Okay, that's a technical talk. Ito yung graph ng production. Hindi na kaya yun. Anyway. So dito, yung blue na line, yun yung production ng melatonin. Ang melatonin is the hormone for sleep. Okay? So makikita nyo dyan, starting 9 p.m., kataas siya, magpipeak siya ng around 12 midnight, tapos bababa, by 7 a.m. wala na siya. Okay? Ang sleep natin dapat nakatapat kung kailan mataas ang melatonin. So ideally, you start sleeping at 9 p.m. until about mga 6 a.m. Okay? Mahaba yun. Pero ang, ang uh, sa research, pwede ng 6 hours lang. So 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. okay na. Okay? Pwede kayong matulog earlier, pwede kayong gumising later than that. Pwede na say 6 or 7 na kayo gumising. Basta matamaan nyo as much as you can yung 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. The more hours na you miss from that period, the more tissues you have that will remain unrepaired. So, bibilis yung aging process natin. Babagsak ang immune system. Kung meron kayong importante yung kailangan gawin, matulog kayo ng maaga, gumising na lang kayo ng maaga, sa kanyo ituloy. Kasi yung mga functions ng katawan, pag natutulog kayo, hindi equivalent sa daytime. Iba ang ginagawa ng katawan sa daytime. So, kahit matulog kayo ng buong araw, it's not the same. Okay? So, basically, uh, yan yung defense natin. Nutrition, exercise, detox, and rest. Kung nasusunod niyo yan, maganda yung immune system natin, malaki ang laban nyo sa kahit anong infection. Ngayon, kung bago mag-pandemic, hindi nyo naman lifestyle yung mga pinag-usapan natin, it might take a while before mag-kick in yung immune system nyo kung ngayon nyo lang sa start to. Okay? Ang problema natin, nandiyan na si pandemic. So ang tanong, are you ready? So ang sinasabi natin, while your immune system is your best defense against infections, okay, at this point, and depending on your lifestyle, it might not be enough. Okay? So we need to add something. Now to understand this more, okay. So kung hatiin ka sa view, yun yung itsura, okay? So dito yung entry ng uh, ng viruses. So merong nandiyan yung mga virus, malalangkap mo yan, papasok sa throat mo. Yan yung area na sinaswap kasi dyan ang unang landing ng mga viruses. So nandiyan sila, okay? So kung gusto mo silang, kung gusto mo ma-prevent ng virus, sa pagpasok sa katawan mo, kasi magsistay sila dyan mga 4 hours before they go down to your lungs and then from there to whatever part of the body na. So may, may, may stop over sila dyan for a while. So if you want to put a checkpoint, okay, you want to put it there. Okay. So dito sa throat. Kasi dyan sila unang naglalating. Dyan mo sila babantayan. Dyan sila magka-attack. At Ano yung pwede natin gamitin dyan? Duh! Out sa immune. Diba? So ngayon, ano bang ginagawa ni out sa immune? Para mas maintindihan natin to, mag-aral tayo ng konti ito sa virus. Okay lang? Yes. Oo, kasi andito na yung slide ko, sayang. Diba? 
Okay. So, ano ba yung virus? It's a microorganism. It's a very small organism. Okay? Pwede siyang living, pwede nang living, causes a lot of diseases sa sa tao at sa hayop. So, ang composition ng bacteria, very complex, ang virus simple lang. Cellular machinery present sa bacteria, uh, ang virus absent. Ibig sabihin ng cellular machinery, yung ability niya, yung uh, Tawag ito. Yung mga features niya to replicate itself para dumami siya. Walang gano'n ng virus. Kaya, in terms of ability to reproduce, viruses needs host. Kailangan mag-landing siya sa something else. Kasi hindi niya kaya ang padamihin yung sarili niya. Kailangan niya gumamit ng materiales ng ibang cells. Okay? And then, yan, ang example, E. coli, salmonella, mycobacteria, yan yung mga bacteria. Ang mga viruses naman, Like, you know, the COVID, SARS-CoV, HIV, HEPA A, the colds, chickenpox, flu, etc. Okay? Iba-iba ang virus. Ang very familiar lang tayo, coronavirus. Pero meron pa siya yan. Iba-iba ang itsura ng mga virus. Hindi ganyan ang kulay nila sa totoong buhay. Graphical representation lang siya. But the idea is, uh, may mga magkakamukha. So, yung coronavirus, Kamukha siya ng HIV. Yan, influenza is a coronavirus also. Yung Ebola, hindi nyo natin masyadong kilala kasi sobrang tapang yan. Hindi naman siya kumalat. Kasi bago siya kumalat, napatay na niya yung mga hosts. Yung mga nagkaroon nun. So, hindi siya na-transmit ng kaayos. Unlike uh, COVID, na dahil mababa ang death rate, ang fatality niya, natatransmit pa ng mga tao. Okay. Ito naman yung structure niya. So, very simple. Yung orange, so may glycoprotein siya. It's a spike. Yan yung didikit sa host cell. Tapos may membrane, yung kulay pink. Tapos sa loob niya, yung bluish-white line, bluish line, yun yung genetic material. Yun yung blueprint kung paano gumawa ng bagong virus. Tapos yung red, na yun yung protection niya, yung nucleocapsid. Okay? Yan yung virus, very simple. Ito naman yung bacteria. So, medyo mas complicated na siya. Yung blue dots sa loob, yung ribosomes, yan yung wala ang virus. Yan yung mag-re-read ng genetic material ni virus para ma-convert at maging bagong virus. So, kailangan niyang pumasok sa ibang cell para magamit yan para dumami siya. Ito naman ang human cell. Complicated na, no? So, Uh, meron siyang nucleus, meron siyang power storage, meron siyang lalagyan ng mga enzymes pang laban sa invasion, meron siyang mga channels, etc. etc. Ito ang structure ni SARS-CoV. So nakita niyo yung classic uh, structure ni, ni virus kanina, ni coronavirus. Ganyan din, same thing. So you have the spike proteins, you have the membrane, yung blue. The genetic material, the RNA is the yellow coil sa loob. And then the purple and yun yung nucleocapsid, yun yung protective cover niya. Okay. Tapos eto yung life cycle niya. So from the top, may kita nyo. Okay, patako ha. So yung spike proteins, didikit siya dun sa reset. Eto yung buong to, eto yung host cell. Okay, siya yung complex na cell kami na. So, didikit si virus, okay? Tapos mag-confuse itong membrane niya with this. Kukunin siya gano'n. Ito na siya. Papasok siya sa loob. Paglabas niya dito, bubo pa, pinalabas yung genetic material niya. Tapos kukunin niya yung mga ribosomes. Remember the blue dots kanina, the ribosomes? Gagamitin niya yan para mag-gumawa ng copy ng blueprint niya. Maraming maraming kopya. Okay? Tapos gagamitin niya yung resources ng cells para gumawa siya ngayon ng mga fragments or piyesa para gumawa siya ng bagong virus. Okay? Tapos magpupunta siya dito, ipapackage, i-assemble dito, tapos lalabas na siya bagong virus. And this new virus, siya ulit siya naman yung makalat ulit sa iba to repeat the process. Okay? Kailangan natin maintindihan niyan kasi yung action ng Uh, alta immune is very uh, take took advantage of that life cycle. Okay. 
So, si Alta Immune, ano ba ang ingredients niya? Marami. Okay. So, kung napapansin nyo, lahat naman yan familiar sa inyo, except siguro yung from incense. Pero alam nyo na yan kasi magpapasko na, di ba? Remember, three kings. Yun. Okay. Skip na natin ang Halloween. Huwag na tayo mag-Halloween, no? Christmas na agad. Okay, so ginger, turmeric, oregano, cinnamon, sage, basil, thyme, frankincense, peppermint, clove. Para lang tayo magluluto. Okay? So, and that's what it is basically. These are food. We're not taking drugs. We're not taking synthetic products. Yung mga properties nila, kinuha lang natin, pinagsama-sama natin. Okay? Lahat ng ingredients na to are known, scientifically proven, to have antiviral properties. Iba-iba sila ng action. Okay? So, si oregano, meron siyang carbacrol, inhibits different viruses, uh, interacts with the viral envelope and the viral proteins. Nalala niyo yung spike kanina, yung dumitiket. So, ginagalaw niya yun. Pag nagalaw niya yun, hindi na makaka-attach si virus. Si Ginger, uh, ganun din, ibablock na yung attachment and the entry. Si Cinnamon, same component, binablock. So, together sila, uh, palapit pa lang si virus, okay? Sinisipa na nila. Ginugulo na nila yung spike ni virus para hindi na makadikit sa host cell. Tapos si, si Time is another thing, ganun din. Uh, viral attachment. Mamaya, I'll show you the summary. Ito namang si peppermint, kakaiba to. It's known to kill viruses within the cells. Pag may nakapasok na virus, let's say, nakalusot ki na ano, nakalusot ki na oregano, kay na ginger, nakaabang si peppermint sa loob. So, kung makapasok sila, peppermint will kill the viruses that were able to enter the host cell. Okay. Tapos si turmeric naman, Di ba meron tayong hinayjak niya yung ribosomes para i-replicate siya? Pini-prevent ni turmeric yun. So yung action para mabasa yung genetic material ni virus, hindi nangyayari. So yung host cell, wala siyang instruction kung paano i-replicate si virus, hindi siya magagawa. Okay? And then si clove, okay? Pini-prevent niya yung, let's say may nakalusot kay peppermint, okay? Si clove, tsaka si frankincense, binablock nila yung replication. So let's say nakal nakalusot kay oregano, naka-attach sila, nakapasok. Nakalusot kay peppermint na hindi niya napatay. Nakalusot kay turmeric, nabasa yung blueprint. etong mga si clove, tsaka si frankincense, si clove, ipablock niya yung production. Okay, so hindi siya nadami. Kahit, kahit parang sa factory, kahit yung workers mo, may kopya na ng instruction, ipiprevent sila ni Globe, huwag niyong gawin yan. Okay, so hindi pa rin nadami yung viruses. Si Frankincense naman, um, let's say may mga nakalusot, okay, may mga workers na nakagawa pa rin ng materials, kailangan siyang i-assemble. Binablock ni Frankincense yung assembly na yon, Okay. And then si basil, tsaka si sage. Ano rin sila, intercellular level, binablock din yung pagdami ng uh, materials ng viruses. So basically, okay, naalala nyo to kanina yung life cycle ni, ni COVID. Yan yung signs of actions ng mga ingredients na sinabi natin kanina. Okay? So, kung napansin nyo, every step of the way, okay, may papatay at may papatay kay virus. Okay? So, bago pa lang siya pumasok, ang dami niyang nakapag may papatay na sa kanya si oregano. Kung makalusot man siya sa loob, ang dami, -dami, ang dami niyang dadaanan para lang makalabas siya ulit. Tapos paglabas niya, andun pa rin naman si oregano. Okay? So, sa tingin nyo ba, kung ikaw virus, maglalakas loob ka ba bang pumasok sa ganito? Meaning, if you have something like this, anong chances ng virus na mabuhay pa sa'yo? Kung papatak mo yan sa throat mo, anong chances na may mag-survive pa na maka, 
makaka-invade pa ng lungs natin. Okay? So, yan ang ating antiviral property ng alta But wait, there's more. Okay? Mm-hmm. Hindi lang kasi antiviral si ano, si si alta immune. Okay? Ah, sorry. Nagmamadali ako. Ito yung summary din pala ng isa pang paano natin san sila pumapasok. So, si virus attachment and entry kay host cell papasok siya. Tapos dadami siya sa loob din yung replication. Tapos si release tapos magi-infect ng bago. Eto, yan. Si Oregon na sino nung time ginger, yan yung pinablock niya. Yung L3. Okay, sa inyo yung mga security guards mo. Sa loob, si Peppermint, Turmeric, Basil, Sage, Clove, sila yung internal security. Siya yung pagpupunta ka sa mall, yung mga Robin na guards. Yun, sila yun. Okay. Tapos yung release si Frank Incense. So, hin- kung, kung may mabuo man sa kanila, yan naman yung exit guards. So, hindi rin siya makakalusot dyan. Okay? So, every step of the way, napablock natin yung uh, replication ni virus. Ito naman yung antibacterial properties niya. Okay, medyo technical. But all those standing regions have different mechanisms. Iba-iba. Yung iba, binawasak yung cell wall ng bacteria. Yung iba, dinitrain yung energy. Yung iba, tinatanggal yung protective coating. So, sa dinami-dami nila, uh, kahit anong bacteria, ang mga antibiotics kasi, specific lang sila. Like, uh, mga antibiotics na pang gram-positive lang or gram-negative lang. Merong mga para sa bacteria lang sa lungs or bacteria pang UTI, mga ganon. When you're using natural products, tapos combination, walang pipiliin na bacteria yan. So, wala rin tayong makikita ng resistance kasi ang nangyayari sa resistance, yung, uh, yung resistant na bacteria dun sa isang drug, dadami siya. Kasi hindi siya napatay ng drug. Pag may combination kang ganyan, kahit resistant siya kay component A, meron pang component B na pwedeng pumatay sa kanya. Kung resistant pa rin siya doon, meron pang 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So, yun yung rationale. Bakit marami tayong uh, components dyan? Okay. And, sige, sabihin natin hindi yung lifestyle yung boosting the immune system. Tutulungan pa rin tayo ni Alpha Immune. Kasi, lahat ng components niya, okay, may immunomodulating properties. Ibig sabihin, in the light of infection, hindi niya lang papatayin yung invading organisms. Tutulungan pa niyang kilitiin yung immune system niyo to boost yung mga panglaban nyo, the T-cells, the lymphocytes, the antibodies, para next time na mag, magkaroon kayo ng infection, ready na kayo. Or, kung maging prolonged yung exposure nyo dun sa infection, malalaban siya. And then, although hindi natin masyadong kailangan ngayon, okay, nabilay siya. Ayan. <coughs> Meron din siyang, so, a summary, alpha immune, sorry, the components of alpha immune are immune boosters, they have anti-inflammatory properties, they have antioxidants, and they are anti-tumor. Tumor is cancer, okay? So on top of uh, being antiviral and antibacterial, meron pa silang ibang component na ganyan. So basically, when we fight infections kasi, it's an interplay of two things. One is something to attack directly and the other is something to boost your own immune system so your own immune system can also attack. So etong autoimmune, we have both. Okay? Yung components nila have those actions. Continue na. Okay, so we recommend basically you take it one ml three times a day. So by mouth, it's a proper. You, you take it when you need to go out or you need to face a crowd. Let's say, papasok kayo, magpo-commute kayo. Drop nyo yan. Pag pauwi na kayo, like ngayon, before I came here, nagsatak na kami sa kotse. Uh, kasi makikipag-boost ko ko sa inyo. Pag alis ko dito, magpapatakulit ako. In case na, you know, may nasagap ako, covered ako. Okay? So basically, anytime or anywhere, any circumstance na kailangan nyo ng extra protection, 
or uh, uh, higher exposure yung pupuntahan nyo, ina-drop nyo lang siya. Okay? You know? So, do we have questions? Manahan ko na kayo sa questions kasi para hindi nyo na ako tatanungin ulit. Okay! I'm already taking antibiotics, antivirals. Can I still take autoimmune? Yes. Kasi ang infectious pathogens natin, di ba iba? So, the more coverage you have, the better. Okay. Can it be taken by people taking maintenance medications? Pwede ba ito sa high blood? Pwede ba ito sa may diabetes? Yes. In fact, makakatulong siya. Uh, di ba yung garlic pang high blood? Mm. So, kung magdadagdag ka ng garlic, so makakatulong siya sa blood pressure mo. Yung cinnamon, pang ano naman yan, pang blood sugar. Okay? So, and all of these are anti-inflammatory. So, depending on how much you're taking, it might even have an effect eventually sa skin irritation, sa gout, yung mga arthritis natin. Konti lang yung impact, pero hindi siya bawal. Actually, makakatulong pa siya. Okay. Can it be given to children? Well, yes and no. Okay. Ideally, we want it sana 12 years old and above. Kung mas bata, below 12, between 7 and 12, mas konti lang yung dose. And not as frequent. Okay. Can it be given to breastfeeding women? We don't know. Basically, we don't know. We don't know if it's good, we don't know if it's bad. The thing is, wala tayong studies about it. Kasi hindi tayo nakakagawa ng studies sa buntis tsaka sa nagbe-breastfeed. So, we just don't have information. If they want to take, uh, you can say now, we can't guarantee the safety. But then, it's their choice. Pero theoretically, basically, these are just food. So, kung kumakain ka ng salad or Chapsui, Pakbet, di ba? Parang combination din naman siya eh. It's just that this time around, it's concentrated. It's the essential oils. Will it work against COVID? Huwag na huwag niyong sasabihin yes kasi awaya tayo ng FDA. Okay? Food supplement to, hindi natin pwedeng i-claim na anti-COVID ito. But, alam natin it does. Okay, bakit? Pwede niyo sabihin kasi, all components, ito na nga pala, ito na dyan, all ingredients of autoimmune have been scientifically proven to have antiviral properties and works on various viruses, bacteria, and fungi. So, can it fight COVID? All ingredients of autoimmune, okay. <laughs> Delicato mag-yes. Okay. Kung baga, you tell them this, and then let them decide. Basically, alam natin, yes. Okay. Pero alam niyo naman ngayon, yung mga gamot na makakatulong sana, eh, for some reason, pinablock. Okay? So, ay tayo na lang. <laughs> Magkakaintindihan na kayo dyan. Can I take out the immune even if I do not have symptoms? Yes. Hindi lang siya, hindi naman siya treatment talaga. Again, hindi natin siya pwede i-claim na treatment. But, uh, Kahit wala kang symptoms, yun nga, for protection lang eh. Ngayon, halimbawa, sinisipon ka, na, sinong nakatry na ng product? Di ba, pag may sipon ka, tapos pag patak mo, parang, parang siyang matamis na fix. Parang ganun yung effect. Very soothing. But this time, it's natural. Okay. Uh, should alcohol be taken even after the pandemic? Of course. Kasi hindi lang naman po ang problema natin. Even before the pandemic, may mga viruses, bacteria kung gusto tayo nakakalat dyan. In fact, kung if we came up with this product even before the pandemic, it would still have been applicable. And even if magka-vaccine na tayo or treatment for COVID, this would still be applicable. Okay? Ay, wala ka. Thank you na pala. Do you have other questions? Sir. Sir. Sir.